Awesome. Um, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak here uh, today um, to you all. Um, so yeah, I'm Ryan Gimple. I'm a graduate student in Jeremy Rich's lab. Um, I'm going to talk to you about my project, which has been, um, which where we found that a glioma stem cell specific super enhancer uh, drives polyunsaturated fatty acid synthesis and helps support EGFR signaling um, in glioma stem cells. Um, so glioblastoma is the most common and most aggressive primary intrinsic brain tumor. Um, it's really a devastating disease with a prognosis, a median survival time of only around 15 months. Um, and all of our current treatment options this time are really only palliative in nature. Um, one of the factors that contributes to this poor prognosis is the presence of uh, glioblastoma stem cells within the tumor. Um, these glioma stem cells are really uh, masters of tumor tissue regeneration. Um, they're functionally defined in our, in our system by the ability to have uh, self-renewal capacity. Um, and particularly, um, we can functionally define these um, in a practical way uh, by looking at the ability of these cells to form tumors in xenografts and really um, being able to probe the self-renewal properties is um, they built their ability to form um, tumors in serial xenografts um, through mice. Um, and so these glioma stem cells have been shown in previous studies to um, be resistant to a lot of our current uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapies, um, and also to promote um, invasion and to promote uh, angiogenesis, and as, as well as um, causing uh, or contributing to recurrence following therapy. Uh, so we think that trying to target these glioma stem cells will allow for better uh, therapeutics in the future. Um, so to better understand uh, glioma stem cells, I used a super enhancer screening approach. Uh, so super enhancers have been shown in a number of different um, tumor types and in a number of different cell types to uh, define cell state and to orchestrate uh, cell type dependent transcriptional networks. Uh, these super enhancers are clusters of uh, non-coding um, genetic elements, uh, clusters of traditional transcriptional enhancers. Um, they really drive uh, cell type specific biology. Uh, so we think that by interrogating these uh, super enhancers, we can identify uh, the most important uh, features of glioma stem cells. Um, so to look at super enhancers in glioblastoma, I looked at uh, H3K27 acetyl chip seq data, uh, which marks active enhancer regions and allows us to identify super enhancers. Uh, in both glioblastoma tissue and in normal brain uh, tissues. Uh, I used these super enhancers, to, uh, this uh, uh, H3K27 acetyl chip seq data, to identify uh, glioblastoma specific super enhancers, where there's high H3K27 acetyl signal in glioblastoma and low in normal brain tissue. Um, I then further looked within these specific glioblastoma specific super enhancers to identify those that have uh, stem cell um, specific uh, enhancers. So this allowed us to identify uh, both glioblastoma and glioma stem cell specific super enhancers uh, that are present in the stem cell populations and absent in differentiated cell populations. Uh, I then um, uh, matched these to the genes that we think that they regulate um, and tried to identify genes that are highly expressed in glioblastoma and have, are associated with poor patient prognosis as a way to identify uh, epigenetically upregulated oncogenes um, in glioblastoma. Um, and I identified several of these um, candidates and validated that they are important um, in glioblastoma. Um, and I decided to focus on one of these genes um, for the remainder of the talk. Um, uh, this gene is uh, LVL2, ELVL2. Um, and um, we can see that it is very critical for a glioma stem cell, both for the proliferation and for self renewal properties. Uh, if we knock down expression of LVL2 using shRNAs, uh, or with CRISPR, we get an um, impaired cell proliferation uh, capacity of the glioma stem cells in a number of different tumor models. Um, we also can see that there's a reduction in self renewal capacity um, through in, lim uh, in vitro limiting dilution assays. Um, so what does this enzyme do? Um, it's an important uh, fatty acid elongase. Uh, specifically, it acts on arachidonic acid and icosapentaenoic acid. Uh, to produce these longer chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, uh, DPA and DHA. Um, we can measure these polyunsaturated fatty acids, the um, products of LLVL2, using mass spec, and we see that they are upregulated and enriched in the glioma stem cell populations compared to the differentiated cell populations, uh, suggesting that this polyunsaturated fatty acid synthesis network is um, really important for glioma stem cells. 
Um, I, we, we next wanted to try to identify what are the effects on the global um, lipids, that are, the global lipidome of the cells. Uh, so we performed a shotgun lipidomics analysis, which allowed us to uh, quantify uh, over 600 different lipid species um, in the cell um, using a mass spec-based uh, approach. And what we found is that there are alterations in a number of these um, PE and PC species. These are, um, this stands for uh, phosphatidyl ethanolamines and phosphatidyl cholines. Uh, these are important uh, membrane phospholipids uh, that are importantly contribute, um, or they're composed of uh, uh, fatty acids, including polyunsaturated fatty acids. Um, and interestingly, what we found is that there is a, a reciprocal change in these um, phosphatidyl ethanolamines and uh, lysophosphoethanolamine uh, species in the cell. Um, and these two, um, uh, fatty, these two uh, metabolites are linked in a process uh, that's known as the land cycle, which is really important for regulating um, cell membrane composition and cell membrane uh, fluidity and structure. Um, so um, because we had seen that these changes in uh, phospholipid membrane composition, we wanted to see if they're actual changes in the functional properties of the cell membrane. Um, so to do this, what we did is we um, used a fluorescence recovery after photobleaching assay, um, or FRAP. Um, and so what, what this is showing is that we were able to stain the cell membrane using a specific um, dye, and which only labels the phospholipids in the cell membrane. Uh, we can bleach a portion of the cell membrane using a high-intensity laser and observe as the phospholipids uh, uh, fill in the, the bleached area. And this gives us an idea of this uh, membrane fluidity of the cell. Um, and what you can see is that while the control cells um, show a, uh, a rapid recovery of the um, fluorescent signal, after we knock down expression of LLVL2, we get a reduction in this ability of the cell, to, of the cell membrane to, re to recover, suggesting that there's a reduced cell membrane fluidity um, following LLVL2 knockdown. Um, so observe that LVL2 is important for regulating cell membrane composition and also membrane uh, function as well. Um, so we wanted to gain an understanding of what are the downstream, um, uh, downstream effects of LVL2 um, knockdown and the effects on this cell membrane. Um, so we looked at uh, clinical data sets um, and found that LVL2 uh, mRNA expression is very highly associated with both um, EGFR mRNA expression and also with expression of um, uh, protein levels of EGFR, as well as the phosphorylated uh, active forms of EGFR. Uh, we wanted to validate this in our cell system as well, uh, so we could knock down LVL2 expression, and we saw that there was a reduction in phosphorylated forms of EGFR, also um, total, total EGFR levels and activation of downstream signaling elements, uh, phospho-ERK. Um, and we can supplement cells with the uh, long chain polyunsaturated fatty acid um, products of LVL2 and see that these help to support uh, activation of EGFR signaling. Um, so, next, we wanted to try to determine if this polyunsaturated fatty acid synthesis network um, could be an important clinical target in glioblastoma. Um, so, we decided to target this using, oops, using a small molecule inhibitor of um, one of these enzymes, FADS2, which is important in this polyunsaturated fatty acid synthesis network. Um, we see that um, treatment with the small molecule um, drug leads to uh, reduced cell proliferation capacity in glioma stem cells. Um, and we can also combine it with um, an EGFR inhibitor, uh, lapatinib, and we see that there's a combinatorial benefit um, that's uh, synergistic, um, at least in an in vitro setting. Um, we also wanted to investigate the potential for in vivo um, therapeutic benefit. Uh, so we knocked down LVL2 expression using SHRNAs um, in two different tumor models. Um, we found that the um, knockdown of these cells dramatically um, reduced, or, um, it prolonged the lifespan of these mice. Um, and we can also treat um, mice with um, small molecule fatty acid inhibitors um, in vivo. And we see that there is a, a small but significant um, prolongation of survival um, of the uh, mice following treatment with this drug. So it suggests that um, potentially targeting polyunsaturated fatty acid synthesis um, could be a um, useful clinical strategy for um, treating glioblastoma. Um, so in conclusion, what I've shown you is that we used a super enhancer profiling strategy in glioblastoma. Uh, we identified a glioblastoma-specific super enhancer that drives expression of this gene, LVL2, 
Uh, it's really important for um, supporting polyunsaturated fatty acid synthesis um, in glioblastoma. Um, and it, uh, these fatty acids are utilized for uh, phospholipid membrane maintenance um, and also to help promote uh, EGFR signaling, which supports uh, glioblastoma um, cell growth and proliferation. Um, so I'd like to thank the uh, members of the Rich Lab for their um, help and support and also our collaborators um, as well. Um, and you can come see me at the, my poster. I can answer any uh, other questions you guys might have. So, thanks. Thanks.